Well, welcome. <laughs> Bienvenidos. <laughs> uh, soy la directora al San Bernardo. So I'm the principal, Mrs. Blahnik, here at St. Bernard. Um, welcome to all of you. Uh, we have Edgar Zaragoza back there. He's um, doing the translation in Spanish. So if you happen to hear some chatter, that's probably what you're hearing. And if you didn't get a translation system and you're interested in it, um, you can pick some up from Karina, um, Senora Sanchez there. So she can hook you up with a translation system. Okay. So welcome. Um, we are we are a Catholic school, so we're going to start with a prayer. So if we could just put ourselves in the presence of God, and then you guys are welcome to just follow along with me. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. Lord, by the light of the Holy Spirit, you have taught the hearts of your faithful. In the same spirit, help us to relish what is right and always rejoice in your consolation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So I um it's there is this is a big school. There's a lot of information to take in. I'm gonna give you an overview. Most of what we talk about tonight is in the packet that you will be able to take home with you. You guys all have a packet. Um, in addition to the packet that you have now, those of you who have, actually everybody, every parent in our community this year is going to receive um, a calendar that's pre-printed all of our school year activities along with the handbook. The student handbook is on the inside of that. That will, you can pick that up on the meet the teacher night, the night you guys drop off all of your school supplies. You'll be able to take that home with you. It looks a little different than it has in the past. It's actually a planner. So if you have specific things going on here at school that you wanna uh, write down in there, you can do that. Um, we have extras, so if any time during the school year you lose it and you need another one, feel free to let us know and we can get you another one. The students in the fifth grade through, through the eighth grade will also be getting a planner just like that that they will be expected to use in the classroom. The younger students also get a planner. It just looks a little bit different and it doesn't have the calendar inside of it. Um, at least the school calendar it has their, like, their planning calendar in it. At any time, please feel free to call the main office. Ask us as many questions as you have. Um, we want to make sure that you feel like you're a partner in this education. I understand that um, there's a big sacrifice for many of you um, to send your children here, whether it's financial sacrifice or a transportation sacrifice, or the family is um, doing everything they can to get to get their children here and to get them home when school ends. So I wanna thank you for that. Um, part of being in a Catholic school means that we see you as the parents, as the primary educators of your children. So that partnership is really important to me and it's important to your teachers as well. So um, one of the things that is not written up here, but that I do wanna share with you is that, actually maybe I did put it in here. I don't know if I put it in here or not. I was thinking about putting it in here. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to mention is that in regards to communication, there is a um, Catholic uh, philosophy called the principle of subsidiarity. And that is that in order to do justice to the people that are in your community, we ask that you go directly to the person who you have a, who you have a question with or who you have a conflict with. And you try that first. And if that doesn't work out, then you go to the next person. And that next person might be me. It might be, um, it might be somebody else. It might be another teacher in the building or somebody that you feel like you can trust. But we always ask that you try to work out any questions or concerns at the lowest level possible. And then that way, what ends up happening is, um, and a lot of people don't like to do this. Here, one, the number one thing I hear from people is, I don't want to tell the teacher that I have a concern because I'm afraid of retaliation against my child. I will tell you, I have never seen that happen, ever. Um, so please don't be fearful of that. We have amazing teachers in this building. I work really hard to make sure that we have the, the highest quality educators. Um, so please trust the people that 
um, that are that your children uh, whose care your children are in. Try that first always and then you can come and see me. There's going to be plenty of opportunities for um, communication and I'm going to go through that in just a second. But the structure of the school is this. We have um, we are a system school, but there's local leadership here. So I'm the I basically run the day to day operations of the school. Um, that is everything that comes with it, all of the personnel, the, the curriculum instruction, the, the health, safety, and wellness of everybody in the building as well. Um, I don't report to the pastor like in a typical parish school because we're not a parish school. We used to be before there was grace, um, but now that we are in a consortium of schools, my, my direct supervisor is Kim Desitel. So if you ever have any um, concerns about me as the leader, you are welcome to go to the grace system. That would be kind of like the direct um, line what, where you would go. Um, as part of the structure of the school, there is a site advisory council. So we have a really nice group of families who, who get together on a monthly basis. I sit on that committee and I always give a report. I give a monthly report to that committee to tell them um, what's happening here in the school community and what areas I'm working on that um, are specific to the strategic plan for the GRACE system. So that is something that you would be able to participate in every month if you would like to. I do a month, I do a weekly newsletter and I put all those dates in that <laughs> newsletter. So if you want to participate, you are all invited um, and welcome to come anytime. We highly encourage your participation. Um, I, I, I highly value parent input, highly value it. Uh, because this is your school and I wanna make sure that I know what you need so that we can we can do our best to provide that for your family. Um, as many of you know, there's a lot of services that the school provides. I feel like the more that I'm here, and I'm going into my sixth year as the principal here, the more that I'm here, the more I'm figuring out the, um, the um, community resources that are here in, same, um, in Green Bay and how we can maximize the use of those resources for the families that are here in the school community. Um, with that being said, um, you'll find parity um, of resources to many of the um, public schools here that, that we're, that in the same neighborhood that we're sitting in. But at the same time, I highly value the high quality education that we're, that we're able to provide our children. One of the things that I think I'm most proud of is the way we integrate our faith through all of our subject areas. But one thing that we also have done curricularly is we have a STEM-based science program called Project Lead the Way, and it has kind of changed the way our, our teachers look at teaching science in this building, but it's also changed the way our children are learning science and learning to engage with science. It's all hands-on, it's module-based, that means that they're given a problem that they have to solve, and we're working on critical thinking skills. So you're gonna see your kids do a lot of fun things and come home with a lot of, uh, a lot of questions, and um, that's what we want. We want our kids to be curious about the world that they live in so that they can start to think about how can, how can I maybe solve some of the bigger problems uh, that are in the community when I get bigger. We have um, a fantastic um, uh, extracurricular, set of extracurricular programs here. The athletic program begins in fifth grade. However, we have basketball in third and fourth grade as well. Um, there are also an, a number of other programs. I think that you have a list of them in your packet. Scouts, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts are two of the biggest things that we have here at St. Bernard. Um, another thing that is really popular is our Destination Imagination Program. That's kind of a STEM-based um, science, technology, engineering, and math type of program where the kids get problems that they have to solve and use um, critical thinking um, and limited resources to be able to solve the problems. Um, additionally, uh, when I started here about five, well, this is my sixth year. When I started here, um, we were about 8% uh, Latino and probably 90% uh, Caucasian and 2% um, other. 
Um, we're very, we look very different now. Our school is very different and our resources have had to change to provide resources for the families that are here. The school that you find on the inside of St. Bernard is very reflective of the neighborhood that we sit in. And that is important because it means that our school is viable. We've gone from 407 students to 505 students in four years. So we are, we're full, we have waiting lists. It's a really exciting thing for all of us here who work at St. Bernard because um, we're glad you're here, um, but we're also glad that our school has a good reputation and that we're doing good things here and that people wanna be part of it. So um, thank you for, for coming and also thank you for sharing the good news about the things that are happening here at St. Bernard. Um, the mission, this is the mission of the school. Um, we came up with this mission statement a couple of years ago. We redid our whole logo and um, really just so that our logo and our mission statement reflected what was already here historically. There, there wasn't, a, there wasn't um, really a mission statement. We really didn't have a logo that told a story. And now when you look at all of our branding and things, you'll see some, some information that's meaningful about the history of this school. Um, one of the things that you'll see on our t-shirts is our tagline, which is Peace, Pray, Learn. Uh, St. Bernard, the man, St. Bernard, uh, was alive in the 1100s, and he was a doctor of the church. He was a, um, he was a Cistercian monk, and he followed the Benedictines. The Benedictines have this um, big, thick rule book that they lived by, but they had one particular rule that, that he particularly liked, and it was the rule of peace, pray, work. And so we took that and we turned it to peace, pray, learn. So um, you'll, you can kind of see that everything we do here, we try to think about our patron saint, and we also try to think about um, how can we live the life of, of, um, of the mission that we have set out for ourselves so that we can make this, the community that we sit in the best place possible. We're hoping that as models of our Catholic faith, as the employees that work here, that we're imparting those same values to your children. Um, and then with you doing the same thing at home and us doing that at school, the idea is that our children are going to be raised in this really fantastic faith-filled environment. Um, and so that really is the, the value of communication, or um, the value of Catholic education. And then, um, as I talked a little bit about communication already, so if you go to the next slide, I think I go into it a little bit. Um, in the hallway, like I said earlier, you're gonna find information about all of these different programs, before and after school care. In your packets um, is information about how to be a volunteer here at St. Bernard. You have to participate in the background check and the Virtus um, workshop in order to volunteer here and in order to um, participate in field trips. And that is so that we can keep your children safe. We wanna make sure that any person who comes into our building and get, spends time with children, that they are people that everybody here can trust to be with their children. So um, uh, like uh, our preschool teacher said in the last meeting, if you know you wanna go on a field trip this year and you haven't done the background check, don't wait till the week of the field trip. Do it before that like at least a couple of weeks ahead of time because it takes a little time for the background check to come through. But all the information is in your packets that shows you how to do that. Um, there is a lot of information to, to, part, to uh, process. Fundraising is a really big part of what we do here at St. Bernard. And the reason is this, the tuition for the people who are here on tuition, your tuition is about half of the cost of what it really costs to, to educate your children. So we charge about $2,900 uh, for tuition per, for the year, but it costs twice that to educate the children. The parishes, all of the Grace schools pull from 28 parishes. The parishes are subsidized. They are given, uh, not subsidized, they are given an amount of money that they have to pay to Grace 
on behalf of all of the children that come to the Grace Schools. So it's the parishioners in Green Bay that are subsidizing the cost of the education. In addition to that, the rest of the amount of money that it takes to run the school is assessed back to us as St. Bernard. We are given a $100,000 obligation that we have to raise every year as a site, and that goes back to Grace. And that just makes sure that everybody um, it keeps their tuition at an affordable rate. It also helps us make sure that we have the resources that we need every year. Um, some of those resources include new textbooks, new science equipment, um, replacing things that are broken, uh, keeping our, our um, playground equipment up and running. So those are the kinds of things that we raise money for. Um, you are, part of your agreement is that you do participate in those things. If you ever have a question about how you can participate, our office staff is amazing. They're very nice, very kind. If you speak Spanish, we have people who speak Spanish in our office. If you happen to come there on a day when one of us is there who doesn't speak Spanish, we will still figure out how to help you. Even if we have to get our Google Translate out, we will help you, okay? So please don't let there be a barrier between your questions and the information that you need as a parent, okay? Um, so lots of ways to volunteer and things to do to participate in. You can go ahead and go to the next one. So things that you can do to get information, places to find information. Next week, next week or the week after? The 22nd is Meet the Teacher Night. On that night, you can, um, you can come to the school and with your children and you can find out what classroom they're gonna be in and you can go to the classroom and meet, meet your child's teacher. And if you happen to have school supplies that night, you can bring your school supplies. The other thing I want to say about school supplies is that I want you to focus on just the essentials. So the essentials are the paper, the pencils, the erasers, things like that. It, the napkins, the Kleenex, the, the Ziploc bags, that is not essential. So if you're trying to manage your budget, you can wait a couple of weeks to bring those things to school and just focus on the things that your child needs in order to start the school year and, and start learning. Does that make sense? And then if you need a little more time than a couple of weeks, just tell your classroom teacher and just say, you know, um, we have it in our family budget for, you know, October. And that's when we'll bring in the napkins and the whatever. Okay, so please don't feel bad about that. Just, just t tell your teacher where you're at. Um, there are a lot of different ways that we communicate with our parents. The most important thing that you can do is check your email. When you applied here at St. Bernard, you had to do it with an email address. That is the email that we send your messages to. If you speak Spanish, we try to send your messages in Spanish. Sometimes the translation is very bad, but sometimes it's okay. Um, we are always working with the company that we work with to try to make that translation better for you. Um, the other thing is that any phone number that you put when you registered, if it was a cell number, that is a place where you're gonna get sent automatic text messages. If you do not want those text messages, all you have to do is hit unsubscribe when it sends it to you, you just touch unsubscribe. Um, if that's not working, send one of us a message in the main office and we'll take you off the list because some of you get charged per, by the message and you know just let us know and we'll take you off. But it's important that you, if you're not gonna get text messages, it's important at least that you're checking your email at least one time a week, at least one time a week. I send a newsletter one time a week and that's just like big things. Um, I don't know, we're having a fundraiser, it's, it's Advent, we're, have, you know, we're doing these different kinds of activities in the school. Um, don't forget to be courteous in the parking lot. Those are the kinds of things that are gonna be in my newsletter. But your classroom teachers, every teacher in this building sends out a message one time a week to the parents so that you can know these are the things that my child learned this week and these are the things that are coming up next week. 
or they're going to send you a message. Don't forget tomorrow they have to dress like this or don't forget tomorrow you need to bring snow pants, whatever. Okay. If you're not getting messages, tell us right away. If, if right now you haven't gotten a message, tell us because that means that, so, that you haven't gotten any of our communication. And I've been sending messages probably for two weeks now. Um, but if you wait until October, you've missed a whole bunch of information. Okay. Um, every Tuesday, your youngest child, not the one in preschool, so if you have a preschooler, we are not sending the, the letters home with them. We would send it to kindergarten and up. So your youngest child is gonna get a folder with your family name on it, and all of the letters from the school for that week are inside. We really try to turn everything into Spanish there as well. That folder comes to you on Tuesday. You need to turn it back to the office by Thursday. It's a two-way communication, so if you have payments that you want to send into the office, you can stick it in there. If you have a lunch payment that you want to make, you can stick it in that folder, put it in the backpack, and we will get it. It only works if you guys do your part and turn it and, and send it back, okay? Because then what happens is we send you the papers, but they're not in a folder, and then they get all scrunched up at the bottom of your child's backpack. And it's hard to read them like that, so. If for some reason you're not getting those brown, the, we call them the Tuesday envelope packet, we scan them every week and we put them on the website. So if for some reason maybe um, grandma is an important part of your family's pick up and drop off or, or grandma's going to be volunteering here and she doesn't get one of those brown envelope packets, you can um, show her where on the website she can see those and look at all of that information every week. So by Tuesday night, the brown envelope, well, it used to be brown envelope, Tuesday envelope, the Tuesday envelope materials will be on the website. Um, and then we have, we're, we're really active in social media. Um, I manage some of it, but we have uh, two or three other people on the staff who are really good at Instagram and making making really nice messages and announcements. So if you haven't seen us on any of these locations, feel free to um, go to social media and you'll see some, you'll see, bless you, you'll see pictures of things that we've done together as a community, announcements about things that are coming up, reminders and things like that. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Okay, pick up and drop off information in your packet is a map about um, how the morning routine and the afternoon routine happen. If you have a child who's riding the bus, the bus drops off on the side of, um, is that Wayfair? This is Wayfair right here. The bus in the morning drops off here and the kids walk up the sidewalk. And in the morning, our children line up by class here in front of the school building. The most important thing I can ask you is drive slow in the parking lot. Please drive slow in the parking lot. And the second thing I would ask you is if you're not doing the picking up and dropping off yourself, please give that same message to whoever is doing the picking up and dropping off. No cell phone use in the parking lot. Bad accidents can happen like that. Drive slow. Always be looking for children because as much as we have adults outside trying to keep the kids safe, sometimes there's one that just darts across the parking lot. And we, it takes all of us to just be vigilant and keep our eyes open and make sure that we can see the kids. We'll have a lot, once school starts, we have a lot of signage in the parking lot, asking families to go slow, um, giving you directionals about where to go. I will tell you, I think that the easiest thing to do is if you're routinely dropping off every morning, I personally think, and it's not mandated that you have to do this because people come from every direction, but really the easiest thing to do is to come down the back here, down um, either Mary Queen, which is right behind our school, or the next road over, and, ha and come down that way, and then come through over here, and then drive through our parking lot and drop off and then exit here 
and then you can go right or left. If you are always, if you're always coming from this way, coming through and drop, dropping off this way, it just makes it an easier route. You'll see that on the map that we provided for you as well. We teach the kids how to get out of the car. We tell them only exit on the right side of the car. And I know that sounds picky, but it has to do with safety because if they're gonna get out on the left, then they're gonna be going in front of a car or they're gonna be going behind a car. But if they get out on the right, then they're going straight to their line and we can make sure that they stay safe. So whatever we tell your kids, please, I know that we've seen the kids in the car saying, no, I'm not supposed to do that. But the parents are saying, just get out, just get out. You know, um, <laughs> just listen to your kids because we are telling them how, how to be as safe as possible. And, and again, with 500 kids here, it just takes all of us to do our part and to, to help keep each other's kids safe. The other thing I would recommend is, I don't want you getting an argument in the parking lot with other people, but it is also okay to, if you see someone doing something that you know, either they're going the wrong direction or they're on their cell phone or they're doing something that's unsafe, it is okay to be kind and just remind them, oh hey, uh, you know, can, we're all trying to keep our kids safe, you know, do you mind getting off your cell phone? Mrs. Blahnik said that we really should be on our cell phones. And then just have a good laugh about it. Because it is going to take all of us to do it. Okay, so if you go to the next one, this is the map. It looks better in color. It's also on our website, so if you want to study it in color on the website, you're welcome to do that. This is in the morning. In the morning, the traffic is all going one direction. The kids line up here where the yellow lines are. And you can come through where the yellow line is or the green line, and the kids get out and they come and line up here. If you're dropping off, if you are getting out of the car, you're gonna stay here for some reason, you, want, you have business in the office and you wanna park, you can follow that yellow line and you can park up there in that upper lot, that's right over there. Like, it's right over there. So you can come in and then park and get out and you can walk your kids in if you want to. So that's the morning drop off. The most important thing is really just follow the signs. We have lots of people outside so they'll help direct you as well. If you go to the next one. Um, this is the afternoon. In the afternoon, it's similar, um, but we have, t we, you'll come in and everywhere where it's blue, you can see there, are places you can park. So in the afternoon, you're gonna come in, park, walk up and get your child. We have a staggered pickup. So um, if you have a kindergartner, yeah, if you have a kindergartner through second grade, kindergarten through second grade, we release at 3.30. So they're five minutes, they're out five minutes earlier than everybody else so that you can come up, you have a little time to park, meet your child and bring them back to the car. And then about five minutes later, the rest of the school comes out. So it is a nice little staggered pickup. Please don't park out there and tell your small child, find me in the parking lot. That is the worst thing to do, okay? Um, most of the time, we are able to stop them because, like I said, we're all right here. All of our adults wear orange vests in the afternoon, so you'll know where the, where the people are that are on duty. Um, but if, if everybody's doing their part, park, come up, even when the weather's bad, um, then we'll be able to keep the kids safe. Okay. Okay, I want to show you this. I didn't show it last year, but um, everyone said that they wanted to see these. This is, these are the two videos we show our kids to teach them how to drop off in the morning. So our teachers made, of, made two funny videos. There is a wrong way to get out of the car and there is a right way to get out of the car. So if you go ahead and just, again, it really is just for the kids. It's not, but they are funny to watch.
that's what not to do. <laughs> so this is the right way we, th we teach the kids how to get dropped off in the morning. It shows you where they're gonna line up too. And that is the right way to get dropped off. <laughs> so one thing that we like to say at St. Bernard, when we end with a prayer, we usually say St. Bernard, and then everybody else says, pray for us. Um, you might hear that in a litany of, of saints. So we say St. Bernard, and everybody says, pray for us. Um, and I like to say, once a bear, always a bear. We're the bears, so you'll see paw prints on all of our things. Um, and at this point, are there any questions that I can, that I can um, answer while, while you all are here? We have a little time. Um, yes. If it's um, raining or snowing, do they still line up outside? It depends on what kind of rain and snow and how wet it is. We make that determination each morning. We have a cutoff for, um, for temperature. So if it is below a certain temperature, um, what you'll end up doing is we open up the space where the kids would normally line up and we run the car line through there and then um, the kids will get out and then we have them go to their classrooms um, in the morning. Um, certain grades go to their classrooms, other grades go to the cafeteria and wait until it's time for them to go to their classrooms. Um, if, it's, if it really is wet outside, we do that in the morning. And you'll see in the morning, Miss Van Dyke is our gym teacher and she's like the queen of the parking lot. So you'll see her, you'll get to know her. Um, she likes hot uh, apple cider, just so you know. Um, <laughs> um, so she'll, she'll give you directions in the morning if it's not clear when you first get here. Yeah, that was a good question. Yes, but what temperatures do kids not go off for recess? Below zero. Zero. Is it zero and below or below zero? I can't remember. Zero and below. Zero and below. And it is all written in our handbook. So you're gonna when you get um, when you get the calendar on Meet the Teacher Night, all of the um, all of all of the determinations that we use for all of that is written line by line. So if you have any questions about that, once you read through it, let us know. And then what we try to do is, if it's like getting close to winter and it's looking like we're gonna have our first snow, we usually send out a reminder with kind of, you know, the expectations of what kids need to bring and when they need to bring it and all of that. Did you have a question? Yeah, was just, I know there's adults out there in orange, but while they get to know the new faces, is there any kind of checkout system so a stranger's not walking into your classroom? Our teachers come out with our kids. So, um, like Amanda, what, do you want to say what you do when you're out there with your kids? Um, well, I'm one of the kindergarten teachers. Um, what myself and the other kindergarten, it just works for five and six year olds. Um, we actually walk them, we'll walk them out. There's a brick wall there. Um, on the side, we have them um, stand there. Um, I have to see mom, dad, grandma, grandpa. I need to see someone. Um, once I see them, I give them a high five, and then they can go. So they know they can't leave um, the wall. Their backs stay on the wall. They know they can't leave until um, I give them a high five. Um, we also like to say the parents, you can, you're also welcome to give them a high five. That's how we kind of start out for a little bit, just so they know. Um, that they're not running out to the parking lot. On the first two weeks of school, we also spend time, meth we methodically go through at the end of the day with each of, with um, each group of kids and we go through what their routine is gonna be so they know where they need to go and what they need to do when they get there. We have a program here called 
um, PBIS. And part of the PBIS program is that everything in the building that we do has a set of procedures, just like, just like the parking lot uh, videos that I showed you. There are videos that we made for everything that we do in the school building. So even in the school day, um, simple things like where do I go for the restroom? Um, where, what's the expectation when I need to go to the office? We have, we have to be like that because we take it really seriously when we can't find somebody. And we have a protocol as well for how long it takes for us to find someone and then what the protocol is after a certain length of time and what we need to do from that point forward. Um, so it is chaotic. Um, at the especially the first few days of school but all of our teachers are out there and we keep the kids together and in the morning when the when we drop off um, there will be signs located where the kids are supposed to line up so it'll be pretty clear where they need to be okay and then if you see something you know feel free to tell me um, or tell the teacher or ask questions as we're going through it okay good questions anybody else Tienes preguntas? <laughs> no? Okay, then we can go ahead and end with a quick prayer, and then I'll just stick around. If there's, um, if you have particular questions, or you want to go out into the hallway and kind of make your rounds to each of the tables with some specific information, please do that too. Okay. So again, thank you for coming, uh, y bienvenidos. Um, Let's just do a quick glory be in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. St. Bernard, pray, pray, pray for us. us.